video up and you're watching, the next couple of minutes aren't going to make any sense, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, hi. <laughs> it's been a while. I don't even know how many months I didn't go back and check. I just, yeah, thought I would sit down um, and talk to you for a bit and tell you what's been going on, which sounds more dramatic than it is because nothing's been going on. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, some of you may have noticed that I have changed my channel name, or if you haven't, if you look down <laughs> on my channel name now, you'll notice that I have changed it and I have changed it to Bailey Made It. I'm going to do a really quick rundown of why I'm doing this and what my channel is going to be. So basically, I just became completely unmotivated making YouTube videos. And then I realized that it wasn't the YouTube videos, it was the content I was making that I had just kind of feel like I had just done it and I wasn't really interested in making any more content about minimalism or homemaking or anything like that. I pretty much stopped watching YouTube videos on that. Uh, so yeah, I decided that I do really love uh, making the videos and having a community here on YouTube, but yeah, I, I am done <laughs> talking about minimalism and the fly lady method and homemaking and more of my family life. So if that was something that you were really interested in, uh, my new content may not be for you and that's absolutely fine. Please feel free to subscribe. I went and unsubscribed from a lot of channels. I think that's really good to do that and clear out your subscription feed so that you're only seeing things that you really want to see. So yeah, there was no uh, big drama or big reason. I was just sick of doing it. So I felt kind of overwhelmed at the thought of stopping, but also felt overwhelmed at the thought of keeping on doing content that I wasn't really interested in. So in, so I just stopped. I just stopped doing anything to do with YouTube. I didn't look at the app. It was just really overwhelming. I felt bad that I wasn't looking at comments and replying to them. And I knew people would be wondering where I was, but I don't know. I guess it's a personality trait of mine that it's not really good that when I'm overwhelmed, I just stop. So that's what I did. I just stopped. <laughs> and then uh, I kind of had the epiphany that it wasn't YouTube, it was the content. So then I just felt too overwhelmed and thought that I couldn't change my content. Uh, then I realized that I could. Anyway, this is a big rambly thing to just say that, yeah, changed my channel name to Bailey Made It. I'm no longer going to be talking about minimalism and homemaking content. I have privated a lot of my videos and that's just because I really don't want my uh, boys or anything, you can probably hear them in the background, but I don't want them or their faces or anything to be online anymore. I did keep up some of my videos, although I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep those ones up, but I tried to keep the ones that have been the most helpful for people. So I did that within uh, just looking at how many views they had had, because I know that when I started the fly lady method and we started to live more minimally, I found it really hard to find just a regular person who didn't have a big, huge house uh, and wasn't decluttering like 10,000 items a day. They would, didn't used to be a hoarder. I found it hard to just find an average person doing those things. So I have left those videos up for now, but I'm not sure how long I'm going to leave those up for, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, and I still am, well, I still consider myself a minimalist. I don't think it's the biggest and most important part of my personality, but I definitely still uh, live that way. So I don't intend on going out and buying a whole lot of stuff or anything, but I also don't intend on letting minimalism stifle my creativity and my want to make things. I think it's just going to keep me more mindful about the things that I do make. So all that to say is that my kind of plan for my channel is I'm going to just be showing you things that I make. I think it'll be a monthly video. If you watch uh, knitting podcasts or anything like that already, it's going to be pretty similar to that. I can hear my voice screaming, so I'm just trying to realize if it's happy screams or fighting screams. I think it's happy screams. Uh, yeah, so my plan is to put out a video, probably monthly, but there might be some bonus videos in there where I will show you what I've been working on throughout the month and my finished objects and what I'm starting, works in progress. I still have my little felt store, which is like my Etsy store. 
uh, here in New Zealand where I sell my project bags. I really love doing that. It's been going really well. Thank you to anyone who watched my videos and then went on uh, to purchase one of my bags. They are only available in New Zealand because shipping is insane. Uh, but I'm going to continue doing that. I'm hoping to do some uh, markets like yarn markets uh, next year where I can sell the bags in person. So I'll be showing you a little bit of that in my channel because that's really important to me. But basically I'm going to be showing you everything that I make. So knitting, crocheting, sewing, anything like that. Might be a bit of baking. I don't know if I make it <laughs> then I will show it to you. And I really feel like I'm a beginner at everything. I feel like I never go past that beginner level of knitting and sewing and everything. I feel like I'm always just at the beginning level. So I'm hoping that having this channel will motivate me to push myself a little bit harder and progress and upskill. Yeah, I do apologize to everyone who liked my old content, uh, but I couldn't really keep making it if my heart, <laughs> that sounds cheesy, but if I wasn't that into it, I really just couldn't keep making it. So there are plenty of other uh, minimalist YouTubers and things out there if you want to watch them. But if you're interested in seeing someone spend a lot of their time making stuff, then yeah, definitely stick around to see that. And now I'm just going to continue on as if I've always been making videos about things that I make. So in this very first video episode, whatever you want to call it, I am just going to be giving you a rundown of some of the things that I am making at the moment. And let's just get started right now and I'll show you some of the bags I am making. I will uh, do some videos and show you how I am kind of running a business from home, a very small business from home uh, in a small house and so it's not taking up much room. I will show that in some videos. But right now let's just go ahead and I'll show you what I am working on right now. I am going to be making some bags. I'm actually making two bags for myself and at the same time I'm going to make some for my online store as well. And later on in this video I'll explain why I am making myself two new project bags. But it's already three o'clock so what I'm going to do is I have ironed everything. I'll show you the fabric I'm working on and then uh, I'm going to do a little bit and I'm going to have to stop and make dinner and do all my regular things and then I'm going to continue on for a little bit tonight and probably tomorrow and I'll show you the finished results. So I'll show you the material I am working with. I actually went and picked this up from Spotlight yesterday. So I just have this pink gingham which I'm going to make some small bags out of. I will leave the original pattern that I used linked down below but I have altered that now and made my own sizes and my own pattern. But if you want a good base pattern to start with, I bought a pattern from Etsy and I will leave that link down below. But yeah, this is uh, one of the fabrics I bought. So I'm going to be using this to make some medium bag. And then this is the fabric I'm going to be using to make some larger bags. It's a really cute kind of sun print. So I'm going to be making two large bags and two small bags. I'm hoping to get most of that done this afternoon and tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, it's time to stop for a little bit and make dinner. One of the hardest things about wanting to make stuff, especially sewing and living in a small house, is that it's such a mission to put it all away and then bring it back out. So when I'm making bags, I just try and do a little batch at once, like four or five at once. And while I'm doing that, I leave everything out. But obviously I need to make dinner and we need to eat dinner on this uh, same space. So my mum actually got me this really cute trolley uh, for my birthday this year. So I'm just going to pop my sewing machine still plugged in and everything onto that. My kids are screaming again. Yeah, so I'm going to put the sewing machine onto the trolley and just uh, drape the material over the top. And then after dinner, when the boys are in bed, I can really easily just bring it all out again. But when I am not sewing, uh, the little trolley lives downstairs, so it's completely out of the way. Thank you. 
Okay, so I finished the bag, so I thought I would show them to you. So I only have one of each here, but I made uh, two of each, uh, one of each to go in my store and one for me to keep. So I do have uh, more of this fabric, so I will be making some more smaller ones, but I decided to make, uh, yeah, these out of the really nice uh, gingham fabric. So I'll probably use this for a hat. I'm gonna be making quite a few hats, so I'll probably use that for that um and then this is the large one i made because i'm going to be making i only my have first one sweater which i'll tell you about that i've kept for myself and it's this one up here uh, so i wanted to make another one for my very first sweater so yeah i made this big size i really like it the print turned out really cute so yeah that's the project bags done so i put my sewing machine away for a little while and now I thought I would just share with you some yarn that I bought at a recent yarn market, yarn show, uh, here in Wellington, New Zealand. It's called uh, Wool on Wheels. I think they do it all over the country, but I went to the Wellington one. And that's where I'm really hoping to be able to sell some of my bags in person next year. Uh, next year it's happening in May, so I'll just have to see. I think there's a bit of a waiting list for vendors to that, so... Yeah, we'll just wait and see, but I thought I'd show you the yarn that I bought. I really love hand dyed yarn, which is a bit of a blessing and a curse because it's so beautiful to work with, but it's also crazy expensive. So yeah, I don't know. I guess that's what I like though. And I was thinking with my first sweater that I should probably be using a cheaper yarn, but I'm not. So I'm just going to put a whole lot of pressure on myself to make my first sweater with hand dyed yarn. <laughs> so. We'll just see how that goes. Yeah, I'll show you what I bought. So the first one is this one from Mama Walling. Uh, in my previous vlogs, I've mentioned her because I love her yarn. I will show you something I finished. I'll just go and grab it. So this is a hat I just recently finished. It's the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. Uh, this is the third one I've made, but the first one I've made for myself to keep and I really love it. I'm going to be making more of these uh, with some of this yarn as well. But I used Mama Walling's Fingering Weight in the colour ink. I still have uh, three skeins left of this because I bought another skein <laughs> at the wool show to replace the one I used for a hat because I want to make a sweater or something out of this. But yeah, so I uh, used this. I held it together with a strand of Rowan Kid Silk and it turned out really lovely. I love the shape of this hat, the double brim and everything. Uh, it's really nice, I love it. So yeah, <laughs> that's a recent finished project and something that I use Mama Walling's yarn for. I also wanted to get a sweater quantity of yarn from her, but the color I wanted had already sold out by the time I got there. So uh, when I make another sweater, I'll probably use her yarn. So yeah back to it. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, this is the skein I bought from her this time. And this is the color Bonfire. And it's in her uh, plush fingering, which is 85% merino, 15% nylon. And I really love it. It's so soft and the color of this is beautiful. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to be making another Oslo hat out of this. I would like to have four or five uh, hats because I wear them every day in winter when I go and pick the boys up from school or when I go out. It's so cold and windy here pretty much the entire winter. So I want to have a range of hats. So I bought this one from her. And then I also brought another skein, which I think I will also be making into a hat or maybe a one skein shawl. Probably a hat just because I love them so much and I just wear them all the time. Uh, so this one is from Union Fiber and it's the color Flume. It's 100% superwash merino. I don't know if the colors are gonna come up very well, but it's a really beautiful grayish green. I definitely went for an autumnal <laughs> winter theme uh, with these yarns. And then the last ones that I bought was the sweater quantity, and I bought this from uh, Miro Yarns. Uh, so I bought four skeins of her DK weight, uh, which is eight ply in the color Coco and it's Merino, Yak and Silk, but it doesn't say what percentage. Yeah, but I, I don't think I've even knit with Yak before, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But this is the colorway. I wanted something just quite simple for my first sweater, something that was an easy 
uh, kind of color to wear with everything and I really like the chocolate brown so I bought four skeins yeah yeah four skeins of that and that's going to be held together with uh, her baby yak cloud so there we go this is a lace weight and this is apparently yeah must be 100% yak so that's going to be really interesting to work with but yeah this is a lace weight um, that I'll hold together with this one and it's the same color uh, cocoa so they should work really well together so that's everything I bought at the Wool on Wheels yarn show <laughs> and yeah my first sweater that I'm going to knit is the Petite Knits uh, Novice Sweater I had a couple of patterns printed out uh, but I think this one will be the best for my skill level just to learn how to knit a sweater all the reviews on Ravelry and things said it was an easy make if you know the basics of knitting so that's what I'm going to be starting I'm pretty excited about it I hope it doesn't take me 10 years to finish I think this will be a priority because yeah I really want to have this as a finished object and I know that that will give me the confidence to try other garments which uh, there's a million things that I would like to knit so yeah that's everything I got at the Wool on Wheels I'm gonna get Mike to help me uh, cake up some of this tonight he hates <laughs> doing it but I definitely need the extra pair of hands I do have a winder but I don't have a swift so Mike has to stand there with his hands like this with the wool around it and has to help me cake it up he hates doing that but he's gonna have to help me so I'm gonna get him to help me cake up um, one of the DK weight and one of this lace weight so I can do a gauge swatch something I've also never done because I've never knit a garment before so I'm gonna be trying that I have my needles and everything ready to go so that's pretty exciting so yeah let me know if you have knit the novice sweater and what your experience was like I'm definitely going to try and knit other patterns from other designers as well. It's just that Petite Knit, uh, I know what her patterns are like from the Oslo hat and I find them really easy to follow and I just really like her style. I have also seen a lot of things I would like to knit from my favourite things knitwear so I'll definitely be trying some of her patterns once I've built my confidence up a little bit. Another thing I have bought to help me with my confidence is uh, this book here. So I just got this from our local bookshop. I took the Knitter's Dictionary out from the library. It's just a little blue book. And I found it really helpful uh, when I was doing, uh, what is it, like left and right uh, increases. I have watched a lot of YouTube videos as well, but I find that having it written down and having a photo or a diagram really helps. So when I took the Knitter's Dictionary back to the library, I decided I would buy something similar and I found this at my local bookstore. It's just knit step by step techniques, stitches and patterns made easy, which is exactly what I need and it's just really super clear instructions so I know I'll be referencing this a lot <laughs> during uh, the making of my sweater. So I'm going to put this back in here. And then I thought just to finish off this first episode uh, I would show you my works in progress. I don't have a lot because I feel like I'm going to get overwhelmed if I have too many things on the go but then now that I'm looking at it maybe I do have too many things on the go but first of all I'll show you what's in this big bag that just lives up here on my bookshelf. I just basically in here have a whole bunch of <laughs> falling out different colored acrylic yarn and I don't really prefer to work in acrylic yarn but for this project that's what I wanted so I just bought a $20 bag from Spotlight that had all different colors of the rainbow in it and for this I am making a granny square blanket. I'm not really following a particular pattern I just found a tutorial for the starburst granny square on uh, YouTube I will link it down below and uh, yeah I've just been making a whole bunch of little squares I just really felt like doing something with color. I don't really wear a lot of color. I don't know if that will change, but I wanted to make something really colorful for our house and I wanted to use acrylic. So one, it was a really affordable and expensive project. And two, the boys can wrap themselves up in it and it's not itchy or anything like that. I can throw it in the wash. So yeah, so far I have made this many squares. I can pretty much 
make one square in probably half an hour, which I think is quite slow <laughs> for a crochet, but I'm still getting used to it and learning the techniques. So I have a couple more here to do the border on, but yeah, I'm really, really loving working with all the different colors and I can't wait to see what this blanket looks like. So this is going to be a long term project because I'm going to need a lot of squares, but yeah, this is <laughs> one of the things I'm working on. The next thing is just in this little bag and I quite often take this in the car with me when I'm going for a school pickup or the boys want to go to the park and it's another Oslo hat that is using Mama Walling's yarn in the colour Heige, Huga? It's Huga. I always want to say Heige but it's Huga. Um, so yeah it's really nice it's got uh, really beautiful colours in there and I originally made a pair of fingerless mittens it's the first time I've ever made fingerless gloves not mittens fingerless gloves but after I'd made them I just figured I wasn't gonna wear them that much my sister made me a really beautiful uh, pair when I was pregnant with Lachlan and I still wear those to this day so I thought it'd be better to have another hat since I want to have another little collection and yeah so I figured out how to frog or unravel things and now I'm using the yarn to make another Oslo hat. So you're going to see a million Oslo hats because <laughs> I really like them. Uh, so yeah, that's a little work in progress that I hope will be finished uh, by next month. Then I just have two kind of stitch work, embroidery, cross stitch things going on. So this one you would have seen if you've watched my other vlogs because I've had it for probably a year now <laughs> and I haven't really done much on it. But I have this uh, Sashiko embroidery uh, with the little rabbits on it and so far I have just done uh, three sides of the border <laughs> so I'm definitely going to try and work on this some more because I want to get it finished and hang it up on our little art wall that I have on our staircase and then the other little fun project that I'm doing is just uh, this little mini cross stitch I kind of thought I would do one every day but, but it's not going to happen so I'm just picking it up whenever I feel like doing something different and I'm just searching for the patterns on Pinterest or anything like that, like Googling them to work out the little patterns. So, uh, so far I just have a little pizza and a snowflake and a cup of coffee and I'm halfway through a little bird. So I'm just picking ones that are cute and maybe mean something from what I did that day. And it's quite a big piece of fabric that's all squished up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, when this is finished, I'm hoping to put this on our art wall as well. But like the blanket this is another long-term project it's probably going to take me a while so yeah that's all i have on the go at the moment but hopefully in my next episode i will show you the beginnings of my sweater and hopefully a finished hat but i think that's going to be it for this first episode i really hope that some of you will stick around for the new content and totally understand uh those of you who <laughs> won't be because it's just not your thing but it's fine uh, but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video. Luna's about to go in behind the bookshelf. Don't knock over the little ghost, Lou. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.